Greetings and welcome back. So this is the Woodwork Fusion PC, a custom all-in-one computer with Cyberdeck inspired look that was built from scratch using wood and 3D printed parts. The heart of this computer is an i3 4th generation desktop CPU, which is mounted on a mini ATX motherboard with 12 GB of DDR3 RAM and a GT710 GPU. Yes, the hardware is extremely outdated, but that was the whole point to create a low-end computer with outdated component but with a better looking chassis made of wood and 3D printed parts. The best thing about this project is that all the hardware can be replaced with an updated version while maintaining the same fittings. Upgrades are also possible and really simple to carry out. Most of the body is made from plywood board which is strong and sturdy material that is simple to work with if you have the right tools. Using the 3D printed parts like the L bracket, we can swiftly join several pry wood pieces together to create a cuboid body that can hold everything and will be structurally sound. An old LCD screen was taken out from an obsolete LCD monitor is also part of the system. The whole project was first modeled in Fusion 360 and then 3D printed using regular Ender 3. We tested the hardware by playing games like Halo 1 and Minecraft. Both of them run really smoothly. We got over 240 FPS in Minecraft, which is amazing. And Halo 1 was running incredibly smooth at 60 FPS on high settings. Overall, this configuration is capable of operating anything that falls under category of basic computing, such as running CAD software, editing software, or even selection of game. This video is about the whole build process of this project. So let's get started with the build. As previously mentioned, a mini ATX motherboard, an ancient GT710 graphic card and an i3 4th gen processor are being used in this setup. Although the hardware specs are below average, they are adequate for general use, such as web browsing and streaming videos or movies. A deep cool 550 watt ATX power supply is being used as the power source in this case. It is brand new and is being used because this PC will soon receive a new motherboard and CPU, making it ideal power source for the next generation of CPU and motherboard. Here a standard 2.5 inch HDD and a tiny form factor 1.8 inch HDD are being both used as the hard disk drives. For this project, I am reusing an old LCD monitor from 2012. This was made by Samsung and is a 4 ratio 3 monitor which was very common in the early days of LCD screen. The design process of this project began with the thought. What if we could make an all-in-one PC that is made in a 70 by 30 ratio of wood and 3D printed parts. Specifically, a design that will employ wood in a way that prevents the PC from being entirely made from wood panels instead. It will use two full-size panels and the remaining portion of the body will combine wood and 3D printed components. Modeling all the hardware which include the motherboard with a graphic card and fan attached, the display, the ATX power supply and both hard disk drive is necessary before we begin the build process. For most new gen hardwares like the ATX motherboard or power supply, CAD models can be found easily on sites like GrabCAD or Thingiverse, sometime on the website of seller or manufacturer. So check out the CAD models on internet before starting to model them from scratch. The display serves as centerpiece of this entire design. To arrange the wood panels in the design, we set up the display in the middle and sketch a rectangular around it. Four display mount keep the display in its place. Because we didn't want to use too much wood in this design, only the left and the base side will be constructed using 60mm wide rectangles of wood. One full size rectangle hardwood board will be used to construct the right side and top side. The space between the wooden boards will be filled by 3D printed components. Making a wooden frame is the first step, after which we place all the hardware. The motherboard is first positioned, so the I.O. will face between two wooden boards on the right side. Here, the exposed space between two wooden boards will be covered with a 3D printed mesh, and the top side will also have a piece that looks similar. The wooden panel on the left side is where the power supply is installed. On the left wooden panel, we cut a rectangular opening for power supply fan. 
Later, a fan grill was constructed to cover this slot. We created two separate holders that will install the power supply to the interior of lift wood panel in order to keep it in its place. This holder will also keep a 1.8 inch hard drive in its position. The 2.5 inch hard disk drive was installed underneath the power supply. In the hard disk holder, we recycle the sheet metal support from the previous case. Additionally, we add two handles to the top side of computer, which will be used to raise or carry the computer. There are two top side covers that are modeled. The fan and the small speaker are housed under one cover. Although the second cover is now vacant, it will eventually be outfitted with the RGB lighting system that will be controlled by three potentiometers. We designed the L brackets that connect two parts together using four M3 wood screws in order to assemble all the wooden panels and the model back cover is made from Creel acrylic. The most crucial component of this project is wood. 18 mm thick plywood board is being used. And we simply need four different size sections to carry out the design. We begin with a base wood panel that is 18 mm thick and measures 250 mm in length, 364 mm in width. Following the left side beams, which are two long plywood cutouts, each measuring 60mm by 355mm. The next component is the right side board, which measures 355mm by 250mm. A slot measuring 135mm by 124mm was built for the ATX power supply fan grill in this area. Finally, two more beams with similar dimension of 328mm by 60mm each are needed for the upper side. The woodworking process was really straightforward and simple to follow. We used measurement derived from the CAD drawings and used a saw to cut all the hardwood boards. The surface of the wooden part is then smoothed out using sandpaper. Next, we apply wood varnish to each board, giving it at least two coats. By creating a transparent protective layer that guards the wood from moisture, stain and damage and prolonging its lifespan, varnish applied to the wood improves its durability and look. These are all the components that I've used in this project. Link to the STL files are provided in the video description, so do check them out. The three different type of 3D printed L brackets were used to hold the wooden frame in its place. The four hole bracket, which is used to group two pieces of plywood together and it is used as a backside in all four corners. The two hole bracket, which is used at the front top side at both edges to hold the screen and group plywood board together and the two hole bracket which also used at the bottom area of the top side to hold a display in its place. Because the PLA is notorious for not being structurally sound material, we used 25% infill in each bracket to give the part structural strength and allow the bracket to hold plywood pieces together without breaking. Metal brackets may also be used in this project but since it was designed from scratch, it make more sense to 3D print every bracket instead. A CNC mill could also be used here to mill the brackets from aluminium, but it would be an upgrade in the future. In total, 8 brackets are required to hold all the wood parts together to form the chassis. The motherboard frame, two different L size bracket and three 3D printed components make up the motherboard holder assembly that we are now preparing. Using two M2 screws, we first attach the big L bracket to the motherboard's frame. The smaller L bracket is then attached in its place using two M2 screws. After assembling the frame, we can now attach the ATX motherboard to the 3D printed frame and tighten the two M2 screws to hold it in its place. We start the assembly process by first preparing the side panel, which is a combination of two 3D printed grills secured between two pieces of plywood each, 355mm by 60mm. First, we gather all the components and place them in the right order. Next, we mark the screw holes from the inside of the grill onto the wooden board and use four M2 screws for each side of the mesh. The 
The end result of this process is a single sided panel with dimension of 250mm by 350mm by 18mm. The next step in this assembly process is to connect the side board with the base board using the L brackets. We start by temporarily aligning the side board tendentially with the base board and place both the four hole L bracket and the long L bracket at the corner of both boards. Next, we mark holes for the bracket fitment and then use a total of eight wood screws, four for each bracket, to secure both boards together. The side panel and the base are now connected together using the 3D printed L bracket. We align the plywood board tendentially with the base board first using two L bracket. Place them in proper sequence, mark the holes and then add wood screws to secure everything together. Then using the L bracket and the wood screws, we join the two 328mm by 60mm plywood board to the top side of side panel. This process will result in a sturdy hardwood chassis that is held together by L brackets that were 3D printed. Next we add a motherboard frame assembly in its position and make sure to align the motherboard IO port with the IO port cutout given on the 3D printed mesh on the side panel. After aligning the motherboard, we mark holes for mounting the frame assembly with baseboard and use 5 wood screws to secure it permanently in its place. We make a simple design modification for display assembly. Originally an acrylic sheet was being used at the front to hold the display in its place. But since we are unable to find the proper acrylic sheet for this project, we are forced to utilize an alternative approach. This method entails making four screen holder that will be screwed on the frame to hold the display in its place. We use white PLA and 0.3mm nozzle to print all four screen holder at layer height of 0.2mm. The first step in the screen assembly is to install the screen in its proper position from the front side. The screen will be secured in its place by the lower and upper L bracket. Next, we affix screen holder to each of the corner of the screen and use a CD marker to indicate the location of the hole. Then we drill designated holes in all of the screen holder component using a drill machine and a 2mm bit. After drilling the mounting holes, we use M2 screws to firmly fasten the screen holder. Three screws were used for the top left and the top right screen holder and two screws for the bottom left and the right side. The screen is now secure in its position and the screen holder and the L bracket will prevent it from toppling over from the front side.
The handle assembly consists of two 210mm long aluminium channel and four 3D printed handle holders. Fusion 360 was used to model this aluminium channel which, which was taken out from frame of an old solar panel. The channel profile was used to construct the holder. Because this is an L channel, we have to design two set of holders. They will be straight on one side and mirrored on the other. Therefore, we export all the four handles holder and print them using PLA at 25% infill to increase the part robustness. The handle is finished by adding a set of handle holder to each side of aluminium channel. Following the fitting of display, we begin the handle assembly which is similar. We first position two handle in their place, align them and mark the hole where they need to attach with the CD marker. After that we drill out marking holes for handle using a drill machine and a 2mm bit. For each handle, we mount it with 2m3 wood screws. The 355mm by 250mm wood panels will then receive a nameplate. To do this, we first place the nameplate just above the panel ATX grill slot and use a CD marker to mark the holes. Next, we drill holes in the designated location using 2mm drill bit and then fasten the nameplate in its place using 2m2 screws. After adding the nameplate, we add the ATX grill to the 355mm by 255mm side panel. Using a CD marker, we place the grill in its proper location and mark the holes on the grill. Then we drill out the marked hole in the designated spot using a 2mm drill bit. 4m2 screws are then used to secure fix the grill in its place. We now add hard disk inside the PC case. We are using a 2.5mm hard disk metal mount that we remove from an old PC case to mount the hard disk drive in its place. We slide the hard disk into this metal mount and secure it with two M2 bolts. The hard disk is then inserted into the PC case between the two L bracket on the left side and that is opposite to the motherboard on the right side. We mark the location of mounting holes for the hard disk drive on wooden case with a CD marker and then we drill the holes in the baseboard using a 2mm drill bit. The hard disk is then permanently fixed in its place using 2m2 screws. We design an ATX supply holder that consists of two holders joined together, accommodates a 1.8 hard disk drive in the center and has an H-shaped portion that connects two ATX holder together and also act as a cover for hard disk mount. This holder is then used to mount ATX supply inside the wooden case. Using two M2s, we first attach the H-shaped hard disk cover to one of the ATX supply holder and then attach the other ATX supply holder using two additional M2 screws. These two ATX supply holder have 1.8 inch hard disk drive mounted to them and now we can use this component in the ATX supply assembly process. The ATX supply is mounted in its place by using wood screws to fasten the ATX supply assembly portion to the inside wall of the wooden panel by utilizing the ATX supply holder assembly to hold ATX supply in the huge slot on the 355mm by 255mm board. In order to connect a motherboard to an ATX supply board as well as other devices like hard disk drive and power switch, we need to simply follow these guidelines. First is the main ATX power connector which consists of 20 pin connector that is attached to a 20 pin connector of similar size which is located near the RAM dims. The P4 connector often known as the 4 pin CPU connector is added to the motherboard next. It is a power supply connector primarily used to feed processor with an extra serial 12 volt. 
After connecting the 20 pin ATX connector and the 4 pin connector, a SATA cable with port 0 and a 1.8 inch hard disk drive that contain windows are connected. A second SATA with port 1 and 2.5 inch hard disk are also attached as well. Last but not least, we attach a push button to the F panel connector, also known as the front panel connector, which is located on the ATX motherboard near the SATA ports. Since the F panel connector is typically labeled, we can use the label diagram to connect push buttons to terminal to the F panel connector's power switch 1 and 2 port. The process result is a PC made entirely out of scrap using outdated components, a wooden DIY chassis and 3D printed parts. This computer is lacking a few parts that will be added to it later on, including the top cover 1 and top cover 2. One part is for fan grill mount and other is for RGB light that can be controlled using three potentiometers that are provided on the top side of the computer. The 2.5 hard disk drive is being used as a storage drive and the 1.8 hard disk drive is currently running Windows. Regarding the old hardware, the PC appeared to run more than okay and the side mesh look amazing. One of the best use for this computer is as a media center. We loaded few of the One Piece episodes on it and it was really entertaining to watch because the wooden panel on the computer matched the classic aesthetics of One Piece anime. This system is capable of running YouTube and playing movies. A comparable concept that just used 3D printed parts was the Latintosh PC project, which we developed previously. The Latte Panda 3 Delta and SBC with Intel Celeron processor serve as the computer hardware. Comparing the Latintosh and the Woodwork Fusion PC side by side, it is easy to see the difference in size between these two computers. This project is currently functioning and I am pretty happy with the final result. Thanks for getting this far and all the project related materials like the STL files, CAD files are all included in this project page which you can check out. Link is in video description. Please let me know in the comments if you need any further help or information. Thank you and I'll see you with the part 2 of this project pretty soon. Peace out.